Inflation, inflation, inflation. I think it's coming, who knows, but it's always best when you're being self-sufficient and doing things on your own to be as prepared for anything and everything that might happen. So what do you need to do? What are the important things to be prepared if we have inflation? Live happy, fun, loving, and carefree. Fresh berries, wild berries that I just picked off the bushes here in the woods a couple minutes ago, and they're really good. But more about that in a second. I think inflation's coming, and we really haven't had inflation to speak of for a long, long time. I mean, you gotta go way back into the 90s to have what most people would consider significant inflation. So, I mean, that's, that's way more than 20 years ago. And me personally, I remember you have to go all the way back to the 1970s to roughly 80, 81. So early 70s, you know, 72 or so it started and it went to 1981. We had double digit inflation nearly every single year for, for 10 years, 11 years. So if you think about that, like in 1972, if say something cost $20, $20 well now you're talking in 10 years time, it's $40, $45. So from 20 to 45, more than double. Gasoline, shoes, blue jeans, you know, all kinds of things more than doubled in price. So, you know, what does that mean for you? Why do you care? Why do you need to be thinking about it and preparing for it? So, and it, we have had rain every single day. It's been raining today. I'm kind of praying that it doesn't start raining again and I have to race inside with, with my camera and my microphone and stuff. But, um, and the humidity is like a thousand percent. I am just dripping. So welcome to the South, Southeast. So, I mean, what do you need to do? The things that you can do are to get it out of the way. The first thing is when inflation comes is make more money. Simple enough, right? If things get more and more expensive, you make more money. And, and that's a great option for those people that enjoy living in the hamster wheel, having a job, going to work, being part of that, that hamster wheel situation is, you know, hey, just make more money. So if you're, you know, in the prime of your life, 20s, 30s, 40s, and you're in the hamster wheel going to work, just, you know, better yourself, get a better job, ask for a raise. You, you're probably going to get, you know, cost of living raises today anyway, and you just make more money. I mean, that's what I did when I was in my 20s and 30s is just work harder and, and earn more. And that's great, but hey, I'm assuming that you're with me here that the last thing you wanna do is be part of that hamster wheel normal life. You know, we're trying to be self-sufficient doing things on our own. And I know for me, I'm really not interested in making more money because of having to work harder learn new skills, whatever. So that's kind of off the table for me, and I'm assuming it's off the table for you if you want to be self-sufficient, homesteading, being prepared for when things go bad, assume, if they do. Just, just being self-sufficient, self-reliant, knowing that you can pick berries and do things on your own. So, one thing that you can do is right now is start stocking up on durable goods. I have in the house, I, I love coffee. I like fresh coffee, I like fresh brewed coffee, I like high quality coffee, French pressed and all that good stuff. But hey, I like coffee better in any form than no form. So up in the house there, we're stockpiled with big plastic vacuum sealed containers of coffee. 
Every time we do our monthly grocery shopping, I buy two containers of coffee. I easily have a year's worth of coffee. I put a piece of masking tape on the top of the container and, and write the date that I buy it. I mean, they're dated, you know, on the containers, they have the best buy dates, best use, best buy kind of things. But piece of masking tape on the black lid with the date that I buy it, and I just stack them in the closet. And every month when we shop, I buy two containers and I use about one container a month and I pull out the oldest container. So I've always got this, you know, good year supply of coffee because I like coffee. You can do that with soaps, you know, anything that's so-called durable. I mean, you can't do that with bananas, obviously, but any, anything, oh no, anything that might be considered a durable good. Then, you know, whatever that is to you. And the other things that you can do is as you go through your routine in the day, as you're doing whatever it is that you normally do, think about the things that, how can you do less of, modify, what, things that you're doing. Do you need to take a shower every day? Can you get by with taking a shower once a week? Can you live in a tent if necessary? Do you have to get your hair cut as much? I don't cut my hair, and if I did, I would do it myself. So can you do things like that? Laundry. Most people these days wash, I mean, in America, in the United States, most people's washing machines are running nonstop all the time. Just load after load after load. We do like one load every two weeks. So can you get by with wearing clothes longer and you know, really thinking about the laundry so that you're using less energy and things like that. Do things less, practice camping out, practice going a week without taking a shower, do less laundry, buy clothes that, that don't need to be washed, washed as much. And you hear them all the time. We have chickens and guinea fowl. Now, we just use them for the eggs. So we have fresh eggs every day. But, and we do, you know, we sell some locally to people and we sell hatching eggs for people that want, you know, to get chickens. But we could use them for other purposes if we needed to. And we have our garden up there with our cucumbers and our tomatoes and our peppers and things. So we really could be, like my grandparents were, we could be pretty much self-sufficient. We get milk from a local farm and we trade them eggs for the milk. They don't have chickens because the predators are really bad where they are. So we just swap. We get a gallon of milk every week and we give them a two, three dozen eggs every week and, and that's good. So, you know, think about what you can do with, with your neighbors and things. Picking wild berries. And I did want to make an important comment is don't go out in the woods picking berries and eating them if you don't know what they are. I mean, these, you know, look like blueberries, but they're not blueberries. Most people call them June berries because it's June and they're ripe. They're really called a service berry. And they, they kind of look like little apples if you look at them. They have the little thingy on the bottom, but um, they're really good. I have a video that maybe I'll stick up in one of the cards here that I made, I think about three years ago, of where I made a really nice cobbler in a cast iron skillet with, with these berries. So things that you can do, but you know, you have properties, figure out what you can harvest, roots that you can dig up, grubs that you can eat, berries you can pick. We have apple trees and pear trees that we've planted, and we even have a couple peach trees, you know, so you have some fruit at certain times of the year. But just think of all the things that you can do as you're going through your day, like I mentioned. Think about the things that you're doing and you, from the time you get up till you go to bed. What are you doing? What can you modify? What can you be doing more self-sufficient? What can you even quit doing to make it so you don't need it? And it's really starting to rain and I don't want my nice camera and, and my microphone here to, to get ruined. Watch another video so see how you can be more self-sufficient. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. I want you to be living happy, fun, loving, and carefree, eating wild berries, and being self-sufficient on your homestead, even when it won't quit raining.
<laughs> I think I better go jump in the tent.